Hey guys, um, today is February 11th, 2022, and um, I, I guess I could say today is the first day of my, the rest of my life, my journey to come. So I want to document this journey for you, um, especially for those who, you know, want to be familiar with the experience before they consider it themselves. So I've, I've scheduled um, gastric bypass surgery. I've been approved for many gastric bypass. They're hesitant on whether they'll be able to do the full gastric bypass. But from what I've in investigated, um, they're virtually the same in outcome, very similar. It's just that there's one extra cut and attachment with the full bypass. And because of my history, they may have difficulty um, doing that part of it. The issue with that as far as I know, is um, I do have uh, GERD, gastric reflux. Um, and that surgery is not recommended for people with GERD. But that said, I'm sorry, I'm kind of a mess, but I guess if I'm going to do these videos frequently, sometimes I will be. So hopefully you'll excuse that. Anyway, um, with um, so with with reflux, you know, the gastric sleeve and the um, mini gastric bypass are not really recommended. But I think uh, what's going through the surgeon's mind, because this actually crossed my mind as well, is I I have been previously dosed with uh, diagnosed. Boy, I can't speak today. Diagnosed with a uh, hiatal hernia. And um, the hiatal hernia is likely the cause of my reflux. So hopefully combined with weight loss and the combination of the weight loss and the repair of the hernia, the hiatal hernia, um, it'll, it'll um, in a sense, eliminate the reflux and put me back to a status where I would be eligible or able to work with the mini gastric bypass, which is frankly a safer procedure also. Just uh, less likely for complications. You know, it's just because it's one less incision and reattachment, so. Okay, so here's the big thing. Um, I'm having this surgery in Tijuana, Mexico. And some of my family members are freaking out. You know, I when I think about it myself, I'm freaked out in general about having surgery. Um, at some point I'll get into the reasons behind that, but I don't feel that it's any riskier in Mexico than it is in the United States. I think um, Americans like to be overconfident in our healthcare system. And honestly, it's not that high on the scale. There's lots of better places in the world for healthcare. So I, I feel fine with that. I, I am a little bit leery about just being in Tijuana with the current, you know, violence and cartel situation, but I'm just going to take all the precautions there and, you know, stay inside and, uh, you know, avoid uh, being noticed is the main thing. Um, I tend to not stand out a lot anyway in Mexico. I... I get confused by a lot of Mexicans as a Latina. So that helps. 
it helps um, to not stand out. It doesn't help when people walk up to me and start speaking Spanish to me like they expect it to be my native language, but you know, I speak a little bit so I'm able to kind of communicate that um, I can't quite get everything they're saying. So, um, but anyway, surgery is scheduled for the 28th. I'm currently in Cuernavaca, which is about an hour and a half south of Mexico City. So I've got to get to Tijuana by then. So I'm kind of waiting to hear back on whether I can arrive a little bit early and stay a little bit late at the accommodations I have planned. And once I have um, the answer on that, then I'll go ahead and book my flight to Tijuana. And um, I'm planning to arrive a couple days early because with my job being, you know, a Monday through Friday job, I need to um, travel on the weekend. Especially, well, I'll be taking the week off after surgery, but... Um, I'll get there on Saturday and I'll have surgery on Monday. I'll be in the hospital for two days. Um, they started me immediately on the pre-op diet. Most of the time those are um, two weeks, so they're giving me two weeks and a couple extra days. Um, it's very low calorie, low fat, low carb, all that. It's mostly just, um, you know, lean protein and vegetables. Um, and it's, you know, their intent is to keep it under 800 calories also, which um, is incredibly low. But the purpose is to, um, a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of bariatric patients have fatty livers and, I don't believe that I do, but I'm still, you know, I'm still trying my best to follow the rules, so the routine. So um, my labs, my most recent labs, cholesterols, um, all that came back pretty good, kind of borderline, but good. So anyway, the, the purpose is to kind of get rid of some of the fat on the liver so that it's easier for them to peel it back, I guess. Um, it just, it just helps. Um, I don't know exactly, but my surgery is going to be complicated anyway. Um, so I guess I will get into that a little bit. In 2001, I had lap band surgery. And I had it in for over 12 years. And in 2012, no, 2013, um, I went in for an endoscopy to get everything checked because I was having symptoms and discovered that the band had eroded all the way through my stomach. Um, so where it would be on the outside, creating a pouch above it. So you have the band around. I'm not really sure how to demonstrate it. Um, you have the stomach with the band around it. And it creates a pouch above it. You know, everything comes in and it gets held here. Uh, for a longer time, there's, you know, depending on how tight this band is, uh, it slows the passage um, into the rest of the stomach. So over time, you know, movement or whatever, it eroded its way into the stomach and it ended up on the inside. It was inside of my stomach. So it was kind of a semi-emergent surgery to get it taken out. So we went, I went in and did that, and surgery went fine. Um, 
I had an NG tube in, uh, a tube down into my stomach afterwards, and at some point I accidentally knocked it loose. And it created, uh, the, the, I think the purpose of the tube is to relieve pressure out of the stomach. So it you know created enough pressure that I wound up with a hole in my stomach. And I also developed pneumonia during the immediate post-op days. And, you know, it was hospital acquired. Um, I won't say the name of the hospitals, but I was in one the year before and then that one, and they were both owned by the same company. And I got um, hospital acquired nosocomial infections in both hospitals and had pneumonia both times. This time it became very severe. Um, apparently I was also malnutritioned and ha somehow um, was in need of a blood transfusion also. So I had all of those things and I developed, I had the infection in my lungs, I developed other infection and so it was just one complication after another and I wound up being in the hospital for about a month. I think it was more than a month and then I spent um, another six weeks with a tube that passed my stomach and went down to the G genome when it, um, part of the intestines and that's how I got my nutrition I had to be tube fed during well, like it, I did it myself but um, had to have tube feeding during that six weeks it went in through my nose and down um, I couldn't, I had to put my water in there, everything. I couldn't put anything into my stomach because we were still waiting for the hole to heal in my stomach. And that was my choice because I had severe pneumonia and they, the, the surgeon wanted to go back in. It was actually not my surgeon, but a partner of his wanted to go in and fix it. But I was, I was suffering from pretty severe pneumonia, so... I was afraid to go back in. I didn't feel like I would make it through the surgery. I was struggling that much. I'm sure I would have, but but I was worried about it. So I chose not to have surgery because the other option was to put the tube in and wait for it to heal closed and see if that would happen. And it did. It did work. But it took time. Um, during all that time in the hospital, I lost the strength in my legs. Um, of course, I couldn't, I had to regain my ability to breathe in general because of the pneumonia. So it was a long recovery. And um, so I didn't immediately go have a revision to another um, bariatric surgery. I was scared to death to have any surgeries at all. I'm actually surprised I've made it nine years without having to have a surgery. But I'm feeling the, my weight's been up and down. You know, I lose it a lot when I travel and then regain it when I go home. So uh, I guess my American habits are set in their ways. I don't know, but um Really lost my thought. Anyway, um, so I regained the weight and I never had another surgery for nine years. It's been nine years. And over the years, I've kind of tried to work up the courage to do it and I'm finally to the point where I feel like I'm ready to do it and not only that I'm to the point where my weight is affecting my physical ability to such an extreme that I know that my health is in decline if I don't do something and I don't trust myself to do it the good old-fashioned way I've been working on that my whole life and I really don't feel that I have time to waste on this anymore. So 
you know, people can say what they want. They can, you know, maybe they can think I'm lazy because I don't go do it the old fashioned way. Um, or, you know, I just need to exercise more, eat less. Yeah. Well, you know, every overweight person knows these things, but that doesn't always change the situation, having that knowledge. And even, and as you get older and your metabolism slows down, even those attempts sometimes don't work. I got to tell you, a few years ago, I did um, keto and I lost 40 pounds pretty fast. This past year, I did keto again, and I this time I followed it even better. I followed it to the T, did not cheat once. For 30 days, I did it and did not lose a single pound. Very frustrating, very. So I kind of knew at that point that um, I was either going to have to find a way to really up my exercise or do something like this. And, um, you know, I'm working on a lot of different things and I work a lot. So I sit at a desk that doesn't help the situation. So I'm just, uh, to the point where it's time to take care of business. So I hope you all understand. Um, I appreciate those that are supportive and um, would like to join me on my journey. And um, so to, uh, next video, I'll talk a little bit about the, the pre-op diet and the things I need to do to prepare. Um, so I guess this is going on YouTube, so if you would like, subscribe and share, uh, apparently that will help me a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.